We've got Dr. Uh, Kevin Cavanaugh with us now, and he is a retired physician and also founder of Health Watch USA, a national organization. Good morning, Dr. K. Uh, good morning, Jack. Watched the news last night. Kind of scary. They're talking about rates of COVID cases and uh, COVID hospitalizations on the rise. What's going on? Well, it is, and this is being driven by the BA2 variant and the BA2121 variant. And we're seeing rates starting to creep up in some states. In other states, they're going up a little bit faster. So many people feel that we're at the beginning of another surge. And Jack, what is also disturbing is what we've talked about since really last year, is that how you do with this virus is largely dependent upon your immunity. This virus isn't getting less severe so much as people are getting more immune. And there's a large segment of our society that has let their immunity wane. Either infections are way back a long time ago and their immunity's waned, or they haven't gotten their booster. And there's a new study out of Harvard and also Massachusetts General Hospital that shows that if you control for levels of immunity and other patient demographics, Omicron is just as problematic and deadly as previous variants. So the virus isn't getting weaker. Some of us are getting stronger. Others are hoping this virus will go away, and that's not the case. Let's go out and get vaccinated and boosted. Okay, if you've got the two vaccinations and you got the booster, and that will have gone back some time. Now they're talking about the second booster. Now, is that just for people that are older and have conditions, or is that basically for everybody? Right now, they're recommending the second booster if you're over the age of 50 or you have a increased susceptibility to the coronavirus. So you have an immunodeficiency, you're at some reason at heightened risk. And if it's been more than four to five months since your first booster and you fall into that high risk category or over the age of 50, you need to get a second booster. If you do become positive from the coronavirus and please do home testing, one needs to consult a doctor, get medical attention, and get on Paxlovid. Paxlovid is a drug from Pfizer. It has a good safety record and also really does decrease hospitalizations and severe COVID. And so we have treatments out there. We have preventative measures out there. What we're going through now with this current variant is really largely on us. I mean, it's not the virus. We've got the tools to really tone this virus down and to blunt this surge. Now, really bad news is, is that there are two other variants, the BA4 and BA5, which are out of South Africa, which appear to be immune escape variants, and they are causing another very large surge in South Africa. It's estimated that the South Africans are 90% immune from their Omicron wave, and yet they're still undergoing a very large surge. So, Jack, there may be more to come. Of course, we do have other therapeutics in the mill, but I, I need to tell you, we still should be following public health advice. I agree with the CDC for reinstituting their mass mandate on travel. And I think activities such as the White House Correspondence yeah. Dinner is really ill-advised. Right. That's setting a bad example. And the more we spread the virus, the more it's going to mutate. But right now, with the variant we have, we have the tools to control it. Let's utilize them. A study out of the United Kingdom suggests that a bad case of COVID-19 could drop your IQ by 10 points. This was in the uh, journal E-Clinical Medicine. Severe COVID-19 could cause cognitive impairment equivalent to aging 20 years or losing 10 points of IQ. While patients are able to recover slowly, some were still experiencing cognitive symptoms for up to six months later. Uh, that has also been referred to as, I guess, brain fog. Well, yes, and they're also experiencing memory problems, cognitive difficulties in trying to come up with what words are, 
And Jack, that's disturbing. And this is up to 70% of the people that have long COVID. Long COVID is now thought to occur between 10 to 25%. That's, that's not good. And so it's not just avoiding hospitalizations. We want to really avoid getting infections. Now, I need to tell you that if you're vaccinated, there is good data now that shows that your chances of getting long COVID are also much less. Another sure. reason to keep your immunity up. So a lot of these scary things that are coming out, we've got ways of mitigating this from happening or even avoiding it, but yet people aren't going out and taking up the tools that we have. In Kentucky, only 56% are fully vaccinated. That's a two-dose vaccine. And now we're talking about the need in a large segment of the population for four doses. So, right. Jack, we're, we're falling behind the ball here. And I think we've got a lot of warning signs. You know, people are just wishing this pandemic away and it's not going to work. We really are now going into another period of time where we need to have heightened vigilance and let's let's go out, get vaccinated, get boosted, continue to follow public health advice with wearing masks and respecting the rights and also the health of other people. Let's care for others, not just ourselves, and wear that mask for the other person. All right, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, thank you so much. Thank you, Jack.